I speak in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My father-in-law was a vicar. I used to have lots of deep theological discussions with him. And he often used to begin a sentence with, well, when you're a vicar, and I always retorted, I'm not going to be a vicar. I don't want to be a vicar. But he would reply, but when you're a vicar, unfortunately, he died before I started exploring ordination. But he always knew. I had no intention of ever being a vicar. But God had other ideas. God had no doubts. And I'm sure Peter, in today's passage, never imagined that he would be leading a worldwide movement of God's people. He was a fisherman, for goodness sake. He was going to lead the whole church. But Jesus had no doubts. So we come to our final instalment on the Bus Stop Cafe vision. Not that this is the end of the vision, it's, this is the start. And the vision will evolve as God leads. In the first week, we talked about not going back to what we did before, of taking what was good, but doing something different with it, of laying down our crowns and allowing Jesus to lead Last week, the message was about how we fish for people. And we used the beautiful story of the table to illustrate the type of service we want to offer by showing the love of Jesus around a table which serves much more than food. Today, we look at the wider ranging vision. What part can we play in this vision? How it affects all other ministries at COGS. So today's passage is Jesus' reinstatement of Peter, and we move from fish to sheep. <laughs> Did somebody bar that? <laughs> Breakfast is finished, and Jesus takes Peter aside, except he doesn't call him Peter. Peter was the name that he gave him. He was the rock the firm foundation upon which the church would be built. But at this point in his life, Peter is merely Simon, son of John, his name before he met Jesus. In the conversation that follows, Jesus shows that he understands Peter's agony. He allows Peter time to focus on Peter's capacity to love and not on his failure. Jesus matches Peter's three denials by asking three times, do you love me? Jesus knows the answer before he asks. But he's not testing the strength of Peter's love. He's asking Peter to re-examine himself. Peter's answers shows that he has a renewed trust in Jesus. He knows that Jesus knows him fully and loves him unconditionally. And Jesus responds to Peter with a command each time. This is Peter's commissioning to look after Jesus' flock, to take on the mantle of the good shepherd. Follow me, says Jesus. And I want you to follow me out of love for me, not out of obligation. We serve because we love. That's why Jesus instills it into Peter. All ministry is based on our love for Jesus. Yes, we constantly let him down. But when we express that love through repentance, he heals us. And he gives us new work to do, as he does for Peter here. Jesus says to Peter, I want you to lead by my example, by love. Jesus did what he saw the Father doing. And he's asking Peter to do what he saw Jesus doing. He wants Peter to share in the task of being the good shepherd. He tells Peter to feed my lambs, to give spiritual nourishment to the vulnerable ones, to children, to new believers, to those who perhaps don't even know Jesus yet, to take care of my sheep, to give pastoral care and support where it is needed, to feed my sheep, 
to enable believers to grow by feeding them on solid food to nourish their souls. Looking after the good shepherd's sheep means strengthening the weak, healing those who are ill, binding up the injured, bringing back the strays and searching for the lost. And that's what we want to do in the bus stop cafe. We too are Jesus' disciples and our commission must always include caring for Jesus' flock. And his flock is out there as well as in here. If we make it about ourselves, our likes and dislikes, then we have, we're no more than hired hands with no love for the sheep. Jesus said, as the Father has sent me, so I am sending you to do the same work as Jesus did. So our vision for the bus stop cafe is that it will become, I've just realised I've got a PowerPoint and I haven't got it on. <laughs> our vision for the bus stop cafe is that it will become the centre of our ministry here at COGS. All other ministries will be connected to it in some way. Like a COG joining together all the other COGS in COGS. So, for instance, the bus stop cafe team will become part of the toddler team to concentrate on serving toddlers and carers. Sorry, <laughs> part of the toddler team by providing the refreshments. And that frees up the rest of the toddler team to concentrate on serving the toddlers and carers. Conversely, the hope is that the users of toddlers will frequent the bus stop cafe. So the cafe feeds toddlers, toddlers feeds the cafe, and streams flow backwards and forwards between the two and between every other ministry in COGS and out into the streets through the bus stop ministry. And the ground becomes fertile. As Isaiah prophesies in chapter 35, then will the eyes of the blind be open and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then will the lame leap like a deer and the mute tongue shout for joy. Water will gush forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert and burning sand will become a pool. The thirsty ground bubbling springs in the haunts where jackals once lay, grass and reeds and papyrus will grow. We sang about it earlier, didn't we? Grace and love like mighty rivers pour incessant from above. It's really exciting. God is really doing something here. I also had a picture of a circulatory system of the human body. Blood pumping back and forth. It's a vision of the body working together for the same outcome, life in all its fullness. Without that circulation, parts of the body will die. We spoke last week of the bus stop cafe being much more than just feeding people with physical food. We want to feed their spiritual needs too by showing the love of Jesus. But we also want to help practically, by supporting the needs of the community, offering advice on things like money and form filling, etc., uh, uh, doing it by partnering with other uh, agencies, agencies like the CAB or Christians Against Poverty, the police, other agencies signposting people in the right direction to, for them to get help. Not necessarily helping them ourselves, but knowing where they can get help. We want to make friends with people in the community and offer prayer ministry. Eventually, we would like to offer evening meals for those on a low income. And maybe hampers at Christmas. And possibly set up a food bank in the future. It's a big vision. But we're going to start small. We're not doing all of that at once. We don't expect all of that to happen right from the start. But as we make relationships, we'll gradually, gradually get to understand what the needs of the community of Crookhorn are. By listening 
and getting to know them. During our um, listening evening last week, someone wrote this on the Padlet board. Our calling to the people of Crookhorn exists within the context of many long-standing pillars of society having been rocked or brought down over the last two years. There is further change to come. People will have many questions, be fearful and open to hearing God's word in a very new way. And we need to be ready. That is so true. The need is great. I don't think the need has ever been greater. We do need to be ready. Someone else wrote, how encouraging if the Lord is saying we're in a new time now where people are more hungry to hear the word, perhaps because of the pandemic. I really believe that we are in that time now. Jesus met people in their hurt and ministered to them where they were. We know that people are hurting, people are struggling. They need to hear the good news that this isn't it. There is more to life. Jesus brings new life. Jesus brings fullness of life. What I love about Jesus' conversation with Peter is that Jesus didn't just pat Peter on the back and say, there, there, or even, that's okay then. Jesus gives Peter a challenge. He gives him the chance to express his love. Peter doesn't have to earn Jesus' forgiveness by working. None of us do. But Peter wants to serve because he's filled with joy at being forgiven. And that, my friends, is the basis for all ministry. Being eager to serve him, to be sent by him, to do his work, and not caring if there's nothing in it for us in this life. The crown we receive at the end of life should be the only crown we desire. So we're looking tentatively at opening the cafe on Monday the 7th of March. And we're going to launch it with a church family breakfast before the service the day before. We felt it was a good thing to get us all together, to enjoy breakfast together, go into the service and and the, the bus stop cafe will be launched. So we're going to, in the cafe, we're going to be serving breakfast, cakes and drinks five days a week from 7 a.m. until 10 a.m. We will charge by donations only. And so we're not expecting people to, we're only expecting people to pay what they can afford or not at all. And strongly believe that the team shouldn't be paid either. So we've got to the bit that you've all been expecting We need some help. Now, you may be thinking, no, thank you. I don't want to work in the kitchen. I can't cook. I'm with you. (laughs) But as the table is not just about eating, the bus stop cafe is not just about cooking. Obviously, some of it is. So if you're one of those amazing people who doesn't get flustered in the kitchen, unlike me, we'd love to hear from you. We're aiming to have teams of three in the kitchen. And a vital part of the ministry is washing up. If you like meeting people, then you might like to serve at tables. Are you good at chatting? Then you might want to be one of the be there to chat to people. Get alongside people. Is prayer your thing? We need this thing covered in prayer. And in many ways, this is the most important part of um, what we're doing. And eventually, we would like to be able to offer prayer ministry. If you're not an upfront person, perhaps you could make cakes for us or marmalade. Or you could go offer to go shopping. Maybe you're gifted in management. Jim Webb is heading up the management at the moment, determining what we need and how we run. Jim is also the kitchen team leader to ensure training is done and is consistent to make sure that there is continuity in what we offer. 
but we do need somebody uh, long term to run the project. A project leader to control the budget, to organise partners to work with, to organise buying, rotors, etc. And to build on the vision. Maybe you have a different skill that you could offer, which could be used to help our guests. Things like filling in forms, helping people access the internet, PC repair, debt counselling, bike repair. <laughs> you may have a contact who could offer help that you could put us in touch with. This is a vision which will develop with time. We're not expecting it all to happen at once. But it's a vision that requires whole body support and commitment. We had a picture last week of dominoes all stacked up, ready to be um, pushed down to, in a shape. Except that one was laid down. That one domino means that the whole thing will fail. Please don't be that domino. If you have issues or concerns about the cafe, come and speak to either me or Jim. Don't be the stumbling block. Or if you can see a stumbling block, tell us about it. We don't want it to fail. We believe this is from God. So we need all of the dom dominoes stacked up. Um, obviously, this commitment comes with a cost. It isn't easy following Jesus. It's never easy. Peter will eventually lay down his life as did the Good Shepherd. But as Jesus said, whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. I'm not saying you're going to die by doing a bus stop cafe, but, 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 it, is, but it, is, it is going to be hard work. As disciples, we share in both the death and resurrection of Jesus. Without the cross, there is no life. Jesus calls us to the same kind of love, a passionate love for Jesus, which is expressed by a passionate love for others giving ourselves to take care of the sheep. Jesus, Peter was willing to go all out for Jesus, for Jesus to be the love of his life. Are you willing to pay the price and follow in the footsteps of servant-hearted love and help bring more sheep into his sheepfold? If you are, then join us. Join in with what God is already doing and let's bless Crookhorn. Amen. Are you excited? <laughs> you should be. God is already doing amazing things in preparation for this. And if you want to be part of what God is doing in this place here and now and into the future, would you like to stand? Even if you're not sure about how you might be a part of it yet, would you like to stand? Every part of this ministry is key. I don't want people taking part in this if they're not excited about it, if they don't think it's right for them. I don't want people doing jobs because no one else will do them. I want you to feel called to this ministry, to feel drawn to it and excited about it. Remember the words from Paul Bayes last week. If you sit at his table, he will, f he will feed you and he will ask you to feed others. He will serve you and he will ask you to serve others. He will love you and he will ask you to love others. You may be afraid that you've let him down too much and he won't use you, but look at what Peter did. Peter let him down big time, but God still wanted to use him. And we know that Peter still gets it wrong, even after the resurrection. He argues, he doesn't listen, but he's still God's chosen person. So what is it that God is calling you to do? Maybe it's not an upfront role. Maybe it's more of a role in the background. There's a worship song uh, called My Testimony, with a line in it which says, If I'm not dead, then you're not done. It's never too late to start serving God. He still has work for you, whoever you are. And as Robert said the other week, you never retire if you're a Christian. Maybe you've been in one role for quite some time and now's the time to change roles. Is God calling you to something else? 
there was a picture last week of a bird trapped by its feet. Do you feel that you're trapped in the wrong ministry? Or you, that you can't break free? Jesus will free you to be what he wants you to be. So let's pause and let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Lord, we stand before you now to offer ourselves. We want to be used for your glory, Lord. Show each of us the part we can play. Show each of us how we can shepherd your sheep, the sheep that don't know you yet. Build us as a community, Lord, a community within and without the church, that we may be one as you are one. And let's say together the words on the screen that are based on Peter's uh, words that Paul quoted at the beginning of the service. This is obviously where Peter has come to. Lord, help us to shepherd your flock as you do, watching over them, not because we must, but because we're willing as God wants us to be. Not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve. Not lording it over those entrusted to us, but being an example to the flock. And we know that when Jesus comes again, we will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. And that's the only crown we want. Amen. And remember... Whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Work willingly at what you do as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. And remember that the Lord will give you an inheritance as your reward. And that the master you are serving is Christ. Thank you so much for all of you who stood up. Thank you. That's a real blessing. There is a sheet over there on the, on the wall um, if you would like to put your name on it, if you'd like to serve the bus stop in any way, even if you don't know what that is yet, how that is yet, if you're at home, ring me or email me or Jim and tell us that you'd like to be added. And Jim will try and contact everybody. Well, he will contact everybody that is on that list to discuss how you feel that God is calling you. It is so exciting. Thank you for all being part of it. Um, it's, it's choked me up. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>